My name is Umbreen. I'm a biology major and a senior at Loyola. I was born and raised in Chicago. I have three sisters and two brothers. I also have a cat, a bird that talks. Um, I've had a snake, some chicks, uh, crabs, and a turtle that just recently passed away. Um, in the beginning of my sophomore year of undergrad, I got really sick. I spent two months in the hospital not knowing what was wrong with me. And uh, at the end of those two months, um, I found out I had cancer. And uh, it was stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. And it really came out of nowhere because no one in my family has ever had cancer or anything. And before that, I was pretty healthy. Um, and by the time they figured out what it was, it was so um, advanced and so it had metastasized basically everywhere. So um, I had to drop out of school and I started treatment right away. Uh, I didn't really have much time to think about what was going on. Um, and after that I just had chemotherapy for six months straight. And um, uh, at the end of that year I found out it was all done. It was a really rough period in my life. Um, it affected me both physically and emotionally. And um, for me, I think the harder part was the emotional side of it, because physically, you know, you go through pain and it happens all the time. And I mean, this was obviously a lot worse than just, you know, your regular cold. But I felt like the physical part of it was a lot easier to handle because, you know, I had meds and all that. But emotionally, it was, I felt isolated because. I didn't know anyone else who was my age, you know, I was 19, I didn't know anyone else who was that young and had to go through all of that. And uh, it was tough seeing all my friends and everything uh, just going through normal life, you know, they're going, taking classes, worried about exams, and then I was over there, you know, worrying about um, if I'd even be alive, because uh, at that time, the doctors weren't really sure if the chemo would work. It was a 50-50% chance, and uh, you know my family decided to try it. Um, and I, I guess I was lucky because I had a lot of support from my family and friends. Um, you know, even though they were still going to school and all that, they'd come by and visit me and bring me cupcakes and watch movies. And um, that part was nice, but it was tough because I didn't have anyone to talk about what was going on inside and I kind of felt like I had to hide my own fears because I didn't want my family to be worried that way, you know. So I had to put on a smile and just act like it was all fine. <laughs> um, they, they were going to do a biopsy and I'd already had so many different biopsies like all over my body but they are like, we'll do this last biopsy uh, and if it still, you know, doesn't, if the results are still inconclusive, um, I was going to have to get a surgery and they were going to basically take a piece of my lung. Uh, and do tests on that, and I was obviously like, freaked out because I'd never had a surgery before. Um, so, you know, we're like, okay, fine, we'll do it. And um, so I just had um, my last biopsy, and it was in my chest. So um, it, they basically take like a giant needle and stick it in you to get tissue samples. It was really scary. So, um, you know, I still had the hole in my chest, and I had a bandage there. And um, before this, I'd been just like praying sitting on a chair or in bed. So uh, my mom was with me and I asked her, I'm like, uh, could you help me stand up so I can pray, you know, the full way of standing up and everything. Um, so she helped me get up and I prayed and uh, it was the first time I actually, you know, stood up and did such and everything. So the moment I just started praying, you know, I felt this kind of calm feeling that everything was going to be okay. And um, the next day, um, my doctor came and he's like, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is you don't have to do the surgery, but the bad news is you have cancer. And um, the funny thing is I was I was okay with that. Like, I was so happy even though you know, it was cancer, but they knew what was wrong with me and I didn't have to do the surgery. And uh, I got to go home. And it was actually a couple days before Eid, so I got to be home for Eid, which is awesome. And uh, I think just that that feeling, you know, that calm feeling when I was praying, it made me feel like, you know, you know, Allah SWT has a plan for me and um, I might not understand why I'm going through all this and it might suck right now, but in the greater scheme of things it's going to work out and it's going to be okay and in the end it really was okay. I I mean, I, I wouldn't wish cancer on anybody, but for me it was, it really helped me get stronger and 
it made me, you know, realize what I want to do. It gave me a drive and a passion, and you know, I don't regret it. <laughs> uh, one of the organizations that really helped me out while I was going through chemotherapy was uh, Immerman Angels, and what they do is they provide uh, mentor angels for people who are going through cancer. So they match you up with somebody who's had the same diagnosis and who's around the same age as you. Uh, so I had a mentor myself, and she was great. You know, she she gave me advice on uh, how to deal with the side effects and about what it would be like long term. So um, after I finished chemo and found out I was in remission, I decided I wanted to do something like that too, because um, when you go through something so scary and so so difficult, and you know other people are going through it too, then it's kind of your duty to give back and give them a positive side of it and help them out too. So I signed up and I became an angel and um, I now have three mentees under my wing and uh, it's awesome because they're all, they're actually all younger than me at this point, but they're all the same age I was when I was diagnosed and um, it's kind of cool because I feel like I see a little bit of myself in them and I see, you know, the fears that were running through my head and um, I can kind of help them out and, you know, tell them it's scary right now, it's really hard and I know what it's like and you're not alone. And I think just having somebody be there um, who's been there and who's all right now, that's like a huge, a huge inspiration and a huge hope for them, I guess, because then they see you and they, they think, you know, one day maybe I'll be able to get to that point too. Um, Alhamdulillah, it's been three years now and I'm still cancer free. Um, I was able to go back to school and uh, catch up with my education. I'll be graduating, inshallah, in May. And uh, I plan to attend med school soon um, and study oncology so I can use my own experiences with cancer to help out future patients. My favorite part of IAW would have to be the culmination dinner because, you know, it's the conclusion of this whole big, huge, awesome week that was tons of fun. And, you know, all of us get to come together, listen to an awesome speaker talk, and have great food with friends. <laughs>